So it's another cold and windy day here in the Mid-Atlantic, so I figured today would be a good day to do some periodic maintenance to the uh, motorhome. Um, so I'm gonna demonstrate today how to do an oil change on a 6.8 liter V10 found in many of the RVs built on the E450 chassis, the Class C's, and um, the process is very, very similar for the uh, Class A motorhomes built on the Ford F53 chassis. So uh, let me show you the tools you'll need and we can get started. Okay, do, uh, do your oil change on the typical uh, V10 found in the Ford chassis. Uh, it's very similar to changing oil in the car, uh, except um, I find it a little bit easier because you don't really need to jack up the vehicle like you would on a car or put it on a lift or whatnot since the vehicle sits up a little on the higher end. So my particular model, you need to verify with your owner's manual, requires 5W30 oil, uh, six quarts to be exact. Um, I've opted to run some of this Mobile One um, extended performance synthetic. One thing I do like about it, if you look at the back, it says it's a little bit better in high engine temperatures. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I generally don't cut my RV any slack. So going up the hills, uh, flat towing our vehicle, I'm, I'm usually pushing it pretty hard. So I figured a little investment in um, some higher grade oil would be uh, worth the uh, worth the investment so you also need an fl 820s motorcraft oil filter um don't necessarily need to get the ford one i generally don't like the frams um I, i'm a bit of a, a car nut and uh there's been a lot of complaints about you know the fil filtration performance of typical frams um, Wix is pretty good, uh, Mobile One makes a pretty good filter, um, Napa makes a pretty good filter, so I'd, I'd, I'd feel comfortable going with any of those, I would just stay away from the frames. Uh, I personally tend to usually try to run the OEM, just, I don't know why, I just, I tend to do it. Uh, to drain the oil, you'll need a 5 8 inch box wrench, I got one of these nice little ratchet wrenches, it's a little bit easier. Uh, an oil filter wrench. Right here, this is uh, to help you get it loose. I got this real nice gear driven one that when you, when you tighten it, 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 it'll clamp down on it. Bought it years ago at a parts store. I'm not even sure which one or even if you can get them still, but I, I imagine they would still make them. You'll need a pan to catch at least six quarts of oil. I like these, these type here that have a, a vent and a drain. Then I can take it over. I have, a, I have a large jug that I keep my oil in and I take it to the landfill periodically when it when it fills up and then um, just to help keep things a little clean some uh, trial gloves and a couple couple shop towels always a good idea um, in case you spill or, 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 or leak a little bit of oil when you're uh, doing the change so with that I will uh, transition over and show you how to do it all right to uh, do your oil change I'll, I'll just point out a couple things this is where on the engine, on the Class C engines where you would fill the oil and you see it says SAE 5W30. That's how I know this general model requires 5W30 oil. Also says so in the owner's manual. And then over here on the other side, kind of down in here, I'll show you a little bit later, is where you would be able to check the oil. Um, not a bad idea at this point to physically check the level of your oil. Since your last oil change, it'll give you some indication if you got some, um, oil burning issues or an oil leak somewhere and at least it gives you a something that you might want to keep a closer tab on um, if it's still generally full then you know you're okay so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to run the engine to get it up to operating temperature this uh gets the oil a little bit warmer it'll flow a little bit better um, and get more of it out of the engine versus leaving some of the stuff behind it'll, it'll get the contaminants kind of mixed back in um, so best thing to do is just start up your you can either take the the RV around the block to warm it up or just let it run for roughly 10 minutes so I'm gonna do that right now
Okay, through the miracle of time lapse, I was able to condense the 10 minutes of runtime down to a few seconds just for demonstration purposes. Uh, I'm gonna set up underneath real quick and show you how to get the actual oil drained out. Okay, so we're looking underneath the RV right now. Looking right here is your oil filter. Right over here on this other side is your drain plug. I'm gonna get my let's put on here real quick i don't like to get oil all over my hands so the first thing you want to do is um make sure you've got your drain pan placed up directly underneath your your oil pan and then take your your wrench or your open end five eighths Loosen up the, the drain plug. Keep a little bit of pressure on it until uh, you can feel the threads are disengaged. And then you can just uh, pull it off and put it to the side. And uh, give it a minute or two for the oil to drain. Okay, so the oil is pretty much drained, so you just wipe off your uh, drain plug, thread it back in, hand tight. You want to be careful, make sure you thread it in all the way by finger so you don't accidentally cross thread anything and cause damage to your oil pan. And then use your wrench and just give it a good snug tight. That's that for draining the oil, so um, next thing you do is move your drain pan up underneath the oil filter. And sometimes you can do these things by hand, sometimes a strap one. This one's not terribly bad if I don't over tighten these things. Uh, just bring, bring this down, it's gonna leak down just a little bit. So I've already done it. Um, I like to pre-fill my oil filters with some oil uh, before putting them in, especially these type that uh, screw up vertically so you it really don't have any chance to spill anything. So I'll open up a fresh, the fresh quart of oil and I'll pour it down in, try to get it mostly full and then Good practice is just to use your finger and put a dab of oil and smear it around the o-ring on top. It just helps prevent it from sticking in, in the future. So then you just kind of put your new oil filter up in place. And just like the other one, you want to make sure your threads are straight. And it goes on many, many turns <laughs> before it gets tight because otherwise you know it's uh, Probably needs a good three or four turns um, just to make sure you're not cross threading it and then like I said you don't want to over tighten these things my fingers look it's a little slippery here so you just want to give it a, maybe a good quarter turn after it makes makes contact that way you're not you're not you're not over tightening it and uh, it'll maintain a really good seal for you so Anyway, that wraps up what we need to do underneath, so let me get things resituated re and we'll uh, finish up. Now that your oil is drained, uh, it's now time to add fresh oil back to the motor in order to finish the job. Um, right here is where the, the, uh, the cap, the oil, the oil fill cap is. Uh, just a quarter turn, pops off, just set it here to the side. Um, I like to use I like to use funnels to start it. Uh, this little wire here was being a little pain and not letting it sit still, so I just grabbed this longer funnel that I had. It uh, it'll stay put a little bit better. Um, so now that the funnel's in place, it's just a matter of 
pouring in six quarts of, or the balance of the six quarts of oil that uh, I showed earlier. Note a little bit of it went into the oil filter before I uh, put that in. So you're only gonna be adding like I don't know five and three quarter quarts. Right, now that the oil's in, I just, just shake off the excess oil out of the funnel, kind of use a paper towel to keep it from leaking, and put the cap back on, quarter turn, tighten it up. Okay, before checking the oil, I just move the camera here to the uh, driver's side of the engine. Uh, before you check the oil, I like to start the motor up, let it run for a few seconds just to get the oil moving around, uh, make sure the, the filter's fully filled up. Um, that way we can get an accurate measurement. And of course when you start it up, make sure the, uh, the oil pressure gauge, if you have one, uh, register some oil pressure and then it's also a good opportunity to uh, stick your head underneath, make sure there's no leaks, that you didn't cross-thread your oil filter or whatnot. Um, if you look in the center here, there's a, way down here, there's a, uh, the oil dipstick. This is one thing I do not like about these things is where, where they put the dipstick on these things. They're a little hard to get to and a little harder even to, to get back in, but uh, it's good just to give them a quick wipe to get the, uh, the old oil that would still be on there. Get it started back in the hole, push it all the way down, make sure it clicks in and then you wanna give it another pull back out and take a look at the oil level. And uh, I'm showing a little bit low, so uh, even though it says six quarts is about what you want, it looks like you'll probably want to make sure you have seven on hand. I don't have to make a note of that next time I change the oil that I probably want to buy seven, but I don't have a, I don't have an extra quart laying around. So before I run off on my first camping trip this year, I'll get some, I'll get another quart of oil in here. Uh, some of it might also be draining down from the, from the cylinder head. So I'll let it sit a little bit longer. Um, make that assessment, but and then add oil as needed. So and that's it. This is how you change the oil in your 6.8 liter V10. Um, I really prefer doing these types of jobs myself. One, I don't have to find a shop that can handle a vehicle this big. Two, I know exactly what kind of oil is going in. And three, it gives me the opportunity to assess things like if the engine was a little low on oil when I was draining or if I see anything else while I'm working on it, it gives me a chance to get underneath just to do a quick look, look for anything that might be loosening up. So, um, and for me, it doesn't cost anything to get rid of my oil. The, my landfill takes it for free. So I don't have any disposal charges or anything like that. So really the only thing I got to pay for is the oil and the oil filter. Um, it might save me five, 10 bucks versus having it done, but um, at the end of the day, I think it's worth being able to do the preventive maintenance and I can also do it on my time too, which is, which is kind of nice since I have a, a garage where it's sitting in, it's, it's not inconvenient. So anyway, I recommend doing this at least once a year. Um, I tend to do mine in the spring, uh, before the first camping outing. Um, yeah, this particular oil is rated for 15,000 miles. Um, I don't put anywhere near that many miles on on this vehicle in any given year. I'm lucky to do a couple thousand a year. So, but either way, oil can absorb moisture and dirt and those type of things. So it's still a good practice to change oil at least once a year. So, with that being said, if you want, uh, please check out my website at www.rvtricks.com. I am I'm in the process of writing up a lot of good content, just general maintenance, uh, how-to stuff, uh, 
to help you help the DIYer out. So thank you for watching.